Hello everyone and uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, welcome back if uh, you've been here before. Uh, apparently I can't assume everyone's coming back. I've got to welcome new people. Uh, it's called being inclusive, I don't know. Unfortunately I did some research on how you were supposed to improve your YouTube views and it turns out the best way to improve your YouTube views is to do a video about how to improve your YouTube views. Uh, pretty much everything I learned doesn't relate to jet engines or my channel. Uh, on another note, please don't come here and expect uh, Dolby Atmos sound quality. I'll, I'll do the best I can, but you get what you get, I'm afraid. Um, same with the picture quality and the editing. Um, I'm, I'm not big into it, I, I try and do as good as I can, I've bought some equipment, hopefully make it easier for myself, I edit it myself, I ain't got some big team at the back of me doing anything, it's all me, and I want to build jet engines, not do YouTube videos, but I want to get the message out, so chicken and egg situation, so, right, uh, first bit, some news, uh, John has um, got his latest engine running, probably the world's largest uh, homemade jet engine or DIY gas turbine, whichever way you want to call it. Um, still manages to surprise himself when the afterburner lit, but boy does it sound good when the afterburner lit. I'm going to insert a clip here for you to watch. And then Another news, Scott's finally got my uh, my old project running, I'll say my old project, the last engine I built running. Uh, I know there's been some issues, but I'm pleased as punch that, where does that come from, pleased as punch, anyway? Why would you be pleased if somebody punched you? But anyway, uh, yeah, it's running, video clip inserted here. Keep smiling, sorry, I'm in internal thoughts and that YouTube training not going so well. Um, yeah, so that's Scott's engine, or my old engine, Scott's done some work on it and it's, it's running well from what I've heard. Uh, not sure about numbers, but probably £200 plus thrust. Uh, should be close to um, 250 I think. So it's going to have an, an awful lot more thrust than the, uh, the last car that set the world record. So hoping to see some video of that running at the track soon. And um, yeah, so on to my stuff. I've started to um, make parts, top of the flame tube. I'll do a video about how all this is bent over and everything. Uh, the small internal wall and the outside of the uh, combustion chamber or the flame tube should I say. Uh, got the outside can of the engine machined um, to uh, draw it up as a flat plate and then found a company that could roll 3mm stainless steel and weld it together to make it look like there's no seam. They've done a pretty good job, uh, it's going to need some tweaking when we get the front and back covers put in. Uh, and the thing I'm going to do next, and I'll have a video in a couple of weeks for you, is the oil system. Um, there's an a insert here, uh, a video of me explaining the oil system. So right, the oil system. We've got the pump here. which goes to what normally would be an inline hydraulic check valve, but it's been modified. Um, the oil's allowed to relief past the check and then at the back of it is a pneumatic actuator which loads the spring up which increases the rate of the spring as it gets compressed which then increases the amount of oil that gets sent to the engine and the oil comes through here through a high pressure inline oil filter and then 
out of the oil tank towards the engine. We've got the suction here and sucks the oil in, obviously. So, not trying to teach just suck eggs, just wanted to show everyone what there is there. I will get round to doing a test soon, and then this all goes inside the oil reservoir, something like that. Testing purposes, we've got a, a gauge there. I use shop air to mimic the P2 pressure to load the, the spring in the check valve, oil pressure, and then that will be all out. And I'll put a hose and return it back to the tank. Got a bushless motor there, um, running six. S LiPo battery through a VESC speed controller. So that's pretty much it. Decent sized oil tank, but I will be adding um, cooling through a plate heat exchange unit and I'll pass the afterburner fuel through the plate heat exchange unit and the pressured oil on the other side of it. Because we only really need a lot of cooling when the afterburner is running normal running temperatures the engine doesn't generate that much heat into the oil it's just why you're caning it down the track so that's basically the oil system i'll have a video soon of it being tested on the bench so if it's uh don't know just assuming that you you understand it all but I'll uh, be doing a video shortly of testing it. So I hope that wasn't um, too preachy or trying to teach any of you to suck eggs. Just wanted to explain how it works and uh, I'll get the, t the test done. Uh, another thing I've done is uh, I've uh, put all the gubbins for the latest fast firing igniter box in this. It's actually going in a bigger box because there's more sparks in there. That's the old box. And uh, just to give a comparison, I'll uh, put two videos in here somewhere to show you that uh, that ran all right, quite fast. That sounds like a machine gun. So, uh, yeah engine should light nice and strong so as I say I think the next thing is to um, get the uh, the oil tank filled get everything plumbed up figure out all the uh, the wiring I did months ago luckily I, I wrote notes about it and um, I'll do a video of testing this system explain why I built a new or improved hopeful system um, is the gasket just a note 21 save your Amazon uh, envelopes or cornflake packets bit of um, out the tube uh, liquid gasket and um, you end up with a half decent gasket so uh, yeah easy enough to do um, as I say it's basically inside well it's the, it's the, the gubbins of, a, of an Amazon envelope which I think is made out of recycled cardboard uh, printed a, a drawing off, cut it out, and then I've laid it up with some, um, as I say, some of this in the tube um, gasket maker. So, yeah, I think I have actually, on another note, I think I went over the top of the amount of holes, but hey ho, it'll look good when it's all put together. So, that's pretty much it. I'm sorry I've waffled on and wasted your time. As I say, I'll do what I can. Best way I can, don't expect um, Dolby Atmos sound quality editing again. I'll do what I can. Uh, I'll try and make it barely watchable, but uh, thanks for your time. Uh, hopefully, you've got better things to do with your life for the rest of the day. So, uh, crack on and do that. And until next time, take care.